want you to hit me as hard as you can. Phantasm. Jimmy O from Joe Blow. We're talking one of my favorite movies of all time, Phantasm. And now we have a brand new 4K version which looks gorgeous. Have you what was your reaction when you guys saw this 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 beautiful pristine version of it? Cat? I was I was blown away from the moment I saw the previews. Uh, I was just like, wow, this is totally epic. You know, compared to 79 wow you know it was uh it was almost majestic yeah it's pristine and beautiful and i remember watching my old vhs copy repeatedly yeah and it was dark <laughs> and grainy and but it's how do, when did you guys find out that this was happening that jj abrams was getting involved i think you know don and i had been talking about it for a little while you know there was it was certainly on the wind you know for the last maybe a couple of years we've been talking about the possibility mm -hmm. all on a very hush hush sort of basis you know because maybe it wasn't wasn't going to happen but um but luckily for us it did it's a it's a pretty neat thing to see there's definitely stuff that you see and hear that man i didn't even know before i mean <laughs> right. really there's all kinds of stuff that is revealed you'd have to kind of be pretty much into phantasm to maybe even notice or care but you know, we've lived it, and so it's very interesting to see such a beautiful uh, restoration. It's cool. When you first got involved, what what were you th you're thinking? Because it's unlike any horror movie back then. It's unlike any horror movie today. How? Did, what was your thought? I mean, you were young, yeah. obviously. What What was your, your what? Thirteen at the time? Yeah, thirteen. Yeah. What was your reaction? Uh, you mean to seeing the film? No, the actually, film? when you got cast. <laughs> oh, um, well. <clears throat> Don and I had made a movie called Kenny and Company mm -hmm. previously, so uh, I basically got a call saying, hey, they're making another movie and you're, you've been cast in the film if you want the part, and so it was a very exciting moment. Uh, you know, whenever you don't have to audition for a part and they're just going to write the part for you, it's, it's a special thing. It doesn't happen very often. It hasn't happened in my career very often, but, <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, pretty neat. And uh, so, you know, very, we were very excited about it, of course. How about you? What, what was your, what, what did you audition? What yeah, was it? I, I, I came in to uh, read for Don. He read with me. I was in jeans and a t-shirt and he said, um, that's all great. And I heard from him a couple weeks later and he said, I want you to come in for a screen test, but this time I want you to wear a dress, form fitting please. <laughs> 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 Something with nice color. And so I came in with the now famous dress. Um, and uh, originally he told me, you know, it's just a it's very small part. You're, you're going to get picked up in a bar by Jody, Bill Thornberry, and uh, taken to the cemetery and somehow you're going to end up uh, dead, but, you know, uh, by means of uh, manic, uh, manic dwarf. <laughs> 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 so I was like, okay, I had no idea what, what the premise was of this film at all. And then... Um, what happened was, when he called and said that I had the part after seeing the screen test, he said, you know, well, first of all, I really like the way you, you photograph, <laughs> you photograph well, you look good on film, so did that dress, and he said, you know, you had this devious, sensual quality about you, and it just got me thinking. It's just so funny the way he talks when he gets really excited, he goes, yeah, instead of you being a victim, I'm going to turn you into a villainous and I'm going to make you the lady in lavender and I still didn't know what that meant until I saw the screening and uh, it was after I stabbed Reggie and I'm standing looking over him and then all of a sudden uh, the tall man's face is superimposed on mine and I was like oh it's still <laughs> yeah that still is a brilliant reveal yeah. Yeah. And I like that, you know what's funny, you go back to that, that was a very different age, that, that makeup, which you see so well in the 4K yes. version, which I don't remember really noticing, yes. but that is brilliant, that is so 70s and beautiful. <laughs> that was Don's uh, mother, who, who was the makeup woman, right? Yeah, that's brilliant. 70s makeup. And now we're here, 2016, with a new Phantasm movie. Kind of amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's insane. What What was your thought when you read the script? And, and how did you... 
it's just such a weird thing to see you all together. That doesn't happen in horror franchises ever. No, it doesn't. You know, we're we're a, it sounds a little cheesy, but we're like a family. We've been making these movies for a long time, and all of us are still friends. Miraculously, you know, in this business, that's also fairly unusual. You know, yeah. so we get together, and it's all very relaxed and very easy to do. And you know, filmmaking is challenging; it's hard work and stuff. But uh, uh, you know we're a, we're a special crew, and which makes Angus's passing that much more difficult. You know, yeah. so um, one of us is uh, passed on somewhere, and uh, uh, it's been a tough year based on that alone. So it's, yeah. it's, but it also makes it extra poignant that the film is finished and released now, and um, uh, I, I know that he got a chance to see it before uh, he passed away, and so uh, he enjoyed it very much, and so that's that's cool. Well, it's a, it's a really nice. I mean, he he's left such an impression on the horror world. I, I know every single horror fan knows who the Tall Man is. Right. Yeah, every single one. Yeah. What was your What was so special about this movie in particular? I, obviously, thirty six years, I think. Yeah, a long time. What was it about this movie and and this script that really was like, yeah, this is a way to finish it off? It, Listen, we make these movies for the fans. Yeah. So more than any other film previous this film is made almost exclusively for phantasm fans yeah it doesn't even try at the beginning to explain what the hell has been going on right. in the event <laughs> right. it the film doesn't care if you know about what's going on it doesn't even attempt to try to really explain it not much I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that we just just we just keep going. We don't, yeah. we don't even care. Well, I, to so, me, it you know. feels like a, it, it feels like in in many ways the tone of the first film, mm-hmm. in that it just kind of throws you in this world yeah. and you accept it, yeah. and that yes. that's definitely fit for yeah. fans. Right. So normally in a film like this, you'd have to have a three minute scene where you explain. Somebody has to explain what the hell's going on, but we don't really. <laughs> We don't really go. Why bother? We don't, we don't Why? Go yeah. Why bother? We just figure if you don't know what's going on by now, well, oh well, that's just the way it goes. <laughs> right. Also, not really, possibly a little counterintuitive, uh, but that's, the, that's what we do. <laughs> I gotta say, your character. I think I was I was a kid when I saw the originally, and I really connected to Mike. I, it's a weird, Michael. Mike, I I really connected to the character. Do you still look back on playing him? Is there something that kind of shaped you to playing him in your adult life? In my adult life? Yeah. Well, we step into these shoes pretty easily mm. after all these years. Mm. So the soul of the show, the soul of the story, in my opinion, is the relationship between Mike and his brother and their best friend, Reggie. And it is this, uh, this, uh, tr- this trio that... That is, uh, that is really the, the magnetic energy that's sort of holding, holding the whole thing together. And so it's very nostalgic. And so when you see us all together in the car or when, you know, we're fighting for each other or when there's a reunion scene, it's a genuine, it's a genuine nostalgic reunion, honestly, you know, because yeah. we're just all old friends. And there we are on set again and we're doing it again. And so, you know, it, it's not a big stretch, really, because yeah. we are all still good friends, you know. So somehow we managed to all still be buddies after all this time. Well, I'm going to finish up with one question. What is your favorite moment, looking back on this whole series, what is your favorite moment? Do you have a moment that really just connects with you and that you always hold dear? I will say this, that, you know, the, the, the lifelong relationships that I have been lucky enough to um, develop and maintain because of the franchise, uh, although not a moment in Phantasm, is mm-hmm. the best thing for me about, about it, you know, because these are some of my best friends. And so to still be working and still be friends and to, and to go through uh, 35 or more years, I mean, uh, that's, a, that's a good thing, it's a special thing, so it's something that we appreciate, I think. I think so. What about you? That's not really an answer to your question. No, I, I, but I, I think I know what you're saying because it's you can't. You, there's like you look back on a film and you can oh well, well there's a scene we shot and that's kind of a boring answer. But I yeah. I think I see what you're saying. Plus, Phantasm is like a part of my childhood, a big part of it. So it's more like like looking back on the films and picking a different moment. I was saying earlier, it's a little bit more for me like looking at a family photo album. Mm. You know, in the old days, folks, we had family photo albums, and you had <laughs> actual pictures that lived inside of an album, and you go like this, and you go, oh, oh, and 
you don't remember that, but believe me, that's how it was. Yeah, some of our original. So, what, what the yeah, what's picture? What's album? <laughs> what's the photo? photo? Yeah. So um, it's like that. Yeah. It's like flipping through a family photo album and looking at the, the different pictures of uh, your past. It's a different past. It's a different world. You're not that same person any longer. A whole lifetime or two has gone by. But uh, you have the album. Yeah, you, know, <laughs> you look at right. what a, what a hell of an album though. It's a hell of an album. Yeah, You're right. You've got them right. It's a hell of an album. Yeah. What about you? What, what? Well, there, there's there's so many instances that well, when I watch the first Phantasm and then seeing this, it just brings back a lot of memories. Some not so wonderful. They're funny now, but I remember first meeting uh, Mike, and uh, he was quite a prankster. And I found out that he had a, um, a crush on me, and his way of showing it was uh, pretty devious. There was, <laughs> you know, uh, during the windy scene in front of the uh, mansion, um, I, it was about 40 degrees, would you say, out, and uh, everybody was in parkas, you know, and scarves, and I was in my little jersey dress, and Don says, I want you to lay on the grass, and I want you to be really limp, when Reggie goes to pick you up, and <laughs> I was freezing my behind off, first of all, and then good old Mike, he, you know, people were supposed to be throwing leaves into this huge wind machine. It's something that they use in airports to uh, get rid of the, the toxic fumes from jets, airplanes. So this thing was huge, and Mike thought, the leaves weren't quite enough. He thought it'd be great to throw stones and twigs in. And all I remember, every time I see this scene now where Reggie sees me laying on the ground and picks me up, I remember <laughs> Don just screaming, Cat, you need to be limp. And I'm just, I'm feeling, oh, oh, I'm just feeling these things hitting me. And I'm I think this freezing. story is bullshit. I don't <laughs> remember it at all. Everybody remembers it. I don't it. remember it at You're all. You're so like full that. of crap. I don't remember it at all. But it was hysterical. So every time I see that scene, and, and the other thing was, Don just had it in his mind that I was going to be shot from the back. And he wanted the dagger behind me. I had to grab for it and then stab Reggie. And I was so freezing and hurting, <laughs> so in pain. I'd go to grab it and couldn't find it. <laughs> and then I remember the, the first time I got it and I went to stab Reggie. We hadn't practiced before and I thought I really stabbed him because it felt like I did and I ruined the shot because <laughs> I screamed. Oh my God. So that's, it's funny now, but it was not funny then. You were so naughty. It was hilarious then, and it's hilarious <laughs> now. <laughs> this, is, this is why you were one of my heroes in the campaign. Yeah. This is why you're... <laughs> right? Well, I, I got to thank Am you. Am I supposed to publicly apologize? Is that what this yeah, is? No. Yes, I, I, I've been waiting for I just want to say I'm really sorry that I threw rocks at you in the wind machine. Yada, yada, yada. Well, I got to thank you guys. Because, work. honestly, it's... As a as a fan of the series, you guys it, it sounds really weird, but you guys were part of my family, my uh, growing up, and it's it's awesome to for you to sit and talk with us at Arrow, and I, I really appreciate it. Thanks, appreciate I love it. the new movie. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah, you guys gotta see it. <laughs>